Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Dev Talk. This time, we have a beautiful project over here called, as you can see, Song of Iron. It's a side scrolling epicness of Viking adventure. And joining me, I have no other, the creator of this one man project. Actually, it was not completely one red project and a little bit of help with music and stuff but no mm -hmm. other than joe from uh, resting relic greetings joe hey how's it going thanks for uh having me on thanks for being here with us i would say you introduce yourself if for chad yeah. also chad uh if you have any questions tag me and then ask the question so i know it's a specific question that you want to know about the game or want to ask joe so i can toss it over to him we have your live q a going on but with no further ado, I'll let you introduce yourself, Joey. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Joe Winter. I'm um, I'm a 15-year game developer uh, as an animator. But now, uh, the last two years, I've spent uh, going indie and trying to make something for myself, which has uh, turned into Song of Iron. And um, yeah, it's been a crazy journey. It released yesterday, and it's uh, it's been... Uh, a whirlwind to say the least about how all that's been going and uh, I'm really excited uh, to chat about it here and I've been waiting for our lovely friend here to stream it for quite a while um, I know he has so uh, he's been a great supporter the whole time and um, yeah it's a huge thing so very excited uh, it's oof, it is an adventure <laughs> I'll tell you that I can't imagine especially since you're yeah, like a one-man army having to deal with everything, shipping, marketing, producing this whole thing, and yeah. keeping all together. Ooh. See, surely yeah, not easy. <laughs> so, first question: How did you came up with the name "Resting Relic," and why was it your first project, the Viking theme, and um, where came the whole inspiration about Song of Iron? Yeah, yeah, Resting Relic. Um... Honestly, I, I was trying to just think of imagery uh, of game of just sort of pop culture gaming stuff, and um, the Master Sword kept sticking in my head, like from the NES version, where it's just sort of in the glade and it's sort of covered in moss and stuff, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know I was just like I just described it and rest. It's a resting relic. It's a relic that has been left alone, and, um, okay. and that's kind of where the game kind of evolved from, and. The double R makes it a nice and clean sort of thing to say. And yeah, it just sort of it felt good. It felt like it stuck. So I grabbed onto that. Um, for the for the game, as far as Vikings are concerned, I actually was in a D&D campaign. And I was a big barbarian Viking guy um, in there. And the story that it evolved from or evolved into and my character story ended up being really great. And I. And that was right at the time I was starting. And I was trying to figure out where the game was going to go. And I just took that story and I just plopped it right into Song of Iron. I obviously tuned out all the other characters and trimmed it down and stuff. But that story really just sort of resonated right away. It was a perfect, uh, perfect uh, story for a game. So, yeah, it was really fun. That was amazing. That is amazing. So, um... What I'm super excited about here is, of course, that uh, we also had the privilege to work with you a little bit together and uh, yeah. bring bring some assets towards the game and uh, voice act somebody or something in a game. I will not spoil it for the audience yet. <laughs> and uh, that was that was really <laughs> very inspirational and helpful. So why did you decide to go for a, a side scrolling? adventure rather than i don't know go into crazy open world third person yeah. kind of things or whatever <laughs> yeah it um pretty early on in develop well i had been kind of making another game that was a big open world something something and uh it didn't take very long for me to realize how impossibly enormous that was going to be and um hard to, to complete and uh, so I kind of started over, and that's where Song of Iron began. And I, I gave myself some really strict kind of guidelines to follow. And it was like no multiplayer, side scroller, um, short, and, and a few other little things. And it was like that really kept it in a scope that was possible to be done. And the side scroller, you know, makes a lot of the math easier and a lot of the code easier and stuff. And so. 
that's probably why we see a lot of them in the indie kind of scene uh because it is it's sort of yeah it makes a lot of things easier but it's sort of the core of it but you know i in, in the end i also you see characters coming from background and foreground and it's still a full 3d world you're just sort of stuck on the, on one line pretty much so that effect of all of it during the demo when you were just walking down some parts and all of a sudden some Vikings coming up from the woods from the background running into yeah. your into your line and you all of a sudden have to like find and are surrounded and uh it definitely is an eye candy from what i can <laughs> see and we're going to show it to yeah, the audience in a, in a little bit also joe was too kind as to provide us with uh, a key to give away to you guys all you have to do is tap the word x in chat to enter the raffle the bot will then later on pick a winner automatically for it plain and simple and uh, so do you think that this whole project and the stuff that you worked on and all the assets that you have created and uh, of course probably after people play the game and if they enjoyed it will ask this question will there be a song of iron 2 maybe yeah i've always yeah i've always wanted to to make uh, this into a trilogy. The the story really is made to be a trilogy. Um, and that's part of the restricting myself to make sure I could get it done. So I really want to do you know one, two, and three. Um, hopefully everything uh, goes well and the numbers come and and come for it. But um, the intent definitely is to is to keep, to keep going if I can. I I've loved every minute of the development process. So uh, if I could keep doing the indie thing, I, I'd be more than happy to. And I would dare even to say that the people around you, uh, and especially people who worked with you, could feel that and the excitement behind it. So I think we will definitely see here a lot of hard pouring and uh, amazingness in the game. Talking of the game, um, I would say we hop right into it and you give us like a short introduction of uh, what's going on. Uh, yeah, we'll sure. play through the first five to ten minutes of the game together. Uh, do you recommend playing on uh, a controller or mouse and keyboard? Um, it really is up to you. I think both work about the same, or whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, I probably preference the keyboard because I built it on that, but I know a lot of people have really enjoyed the the, the gamepad. Aiming, if you want to be really bow-centric, the bow is probably a little easier with the mouse. Um, okay. Well, the mouse but, and keyboard will be. Yeah. Duskwolves ask, did you make all the acids on your own? Um, I used some store assets, some mega scan stuff uh, for that solve the environment side of things, but I sculpted and edited pretty much every single one of the assets in some way or the other. Um, as far as characters are concerned, those are 100% pure scratch um, from the first polygon to to the final animation and simulated cloth and all that kind of stuff uh, and then audio is all is all custom and same with music is all custom so if this song of iron will then next be the song of steel <laughs> the song of steel that's a that's not too bad no i mean the hope would be that it would be um you know song of iron and then a little subtitle you know battle of the gods or whatever it would be something like that mm. Write it down, Chad. Maybe spoilers. Song of wood. Ballad, yeah, ballad of ballad of iron. <laughs> Song of iron, the ballad of steel, and the wind of uh, I don't know what's what's the next after steel. Plat, I don't know tit titanium. <laughs> so let's hop right into it. Oh, we can play male or female. Um, I can role play better or interact better with uh, characters I can dive into, so I mostly go on games for male characters. That's that's why the options there. I wish I could do more, but it's, it's a lot of work to pull more up. But Definitely. So what's happening here? Our characters... So we're, we're standing in front of a, of a pyre, of a funeral pyre with um, someone on it. And um, yeah, people, hopefully people can hear it, but that's, um, you know... The, the wonderful sad music made by Will yeah. and it's just a bit of an intro and this is effectively a flashback into how we got to where we just were so 
Uh, Chadwick, quick, quick, uh, quick, yeah. quick, quick, uh, in between. Are we good with the audio? Is Joel loud enough? Is the game loud enough? Can you hear us clearly? That would be a great feedback that we can have. And uh, the sound so far, mm. beautiful. Dusk will ask you, did you make this in like um, the 3D stuff in Blender? Uh, this was, I did most of it in Maya and 3D Studio Max, um, which are basically uh, similar to Blender. They're more old school because I've been around for a while, and so I'm, I'm used to those. <laughs> mm. Oh, and it's going right into action. Yeah, you better better uh, learn on the learn on the on the job, as they say. <laughs> if you hold shield and attack, you'll do the shield combo. If you just attack without holding shield, then you'll you'll swing with that. Ah, that's how it goes. Okay. And I see that the shield yep. is also breaking down slowly. Yep, and the shield the shield breaks. Your weapons won't break, but you can throw them and stuff, and then you can just yeah grab another shield like like you just did. Ryan asked if there will be maybe some character customization. I don't think that. Um, I it's one of the things I kind of would always try to try to avoid, just in terms of the you know just trying to get a, a story out and a game out and being alone. Those things uh, can really add up. Um, so that's why I made the two options and hoping that, that people could kind of pick what, what they wanted to be, but uh, no plans on that right now. Future games, maybe it'd be better to be able to customize yourself a little bit more, but for this one, for my first release, I, I went, I chose simple and do, to try to do that well as much as possible. I've, I have to say, I kind of like the this aspect right here, uh, the scenery, as you, you are basically side-scrolling from left to right. Mm -hmm. But with uh, objects in front of you and uh, quickly disappearing behind it and whatnot, it gives this depth of field kind yeah, of view. Yeah. Like, love it. Oh. Eat back! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that felt amazing. <laughs> yeah, that the axe throw is, is absolutely the one of the, the coolest bits, I think. Um, it's probably a little overpowered, but it's just so it's so fun to do, so <laughs> I mean overpowered? I'm not sure if you would survive tanking your face with a Oh, that was just not intended. Yeah, but don't try yeah, don't lose that. You can roll past enemies, so if you if you need to go get up, yeah, you got another one over here you can use. There you go. And if you hold the attack button and then you do a bit of a charge up, uh, that can knock them back and that can uh, that'll hit much harder too. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Wham. <laughs> nice one. Yeah. So the, the fighting from what I can uh, say here feels super intense. The hits, you feel this this oomph of the, of the hits. <laughs> well, yeah. he was once yeah, an archer like, like me, but then he took an axe to the knee. Okay, and I see we can uh, do have also the typical side scrolling puzzling thing where yeah, just a little bit of pushing stuff around. It's not the puzzles are never super complex, definitely. Um, uh, I'm not busting anyone's brains uh, on puzzles, but it's nice to have a you know a little bit of a breakup in the game. I see. So yeah. This was now the the flashback. Yes, yeah, so this is the bit, you know, this is the loved one that you just saw on the pyre. And she's basically giving you your 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 mission for the game and also uh, being, you know, a loved one of yours. She's sort of the reason that you're going to go on this mission. So some, from what I understood, some uh, wolf freak came up to your humble town, burned everything down, and you were yep. out to find the rest bits of your... Yeah, so we, she's basically, you know, the, they're they're too strong, so she's going to send you to try to get the help from the gods because, you know, they they owe you because you've been, you know, you've served them well and they've given you this necklace from long ago and so she's going to, she just gave you the necklace and so that's in theory a token that you can use to summon them and basically ask them for help. Mm. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, it is on consoles. It's on. It came on Xbox as well as Steam. Yeah, boy, Ryan. <laughs> There you go. Xbox and PC release since yesterday. If you want to have a look, uh, link to Steam, type an exclamation mark Dev Talk. That will give you the Steam link towards Song of Iron. And uh, okay, there's like a setup over here. Oop, Hold don't forget to your bow there. The... Oh, there was a bow as well. Yeah, one more thing. There you go. And bow is right click. Okay, look at that. Was yeah, you, you can oh, I see. If I put down, do this. Yeah. Put and then if you're if you're sprinting and you crouch, you'll slide. And if you're just standing or walking, then you'll you'll crouch mm. and walk. I saw it in the trailer. Also a drop kick. Yeah. So if you um, let's see, it should be F on the keyboard. Will be just kick. Yeah. And then if you j if you jump and hit kick. <laughs> you can drop kick. <laughs> Yeah, I so that, that's really, that's a great example of the controls, like trying to be really contextual with them. You know, it's just, here's the kick, and if you're doing different things, different things will happen. It's the same thing with the, when you had the shield up and you were attacking, you were doing the shield bash. Um, I, I try to make everything contextual to what you're, what you're doing. Um, so there's, yeah, there's like a two hit shield bash combo, or if you just swing, if you just click, you have the little, yeah, so you'll do a little knock mm. there. And, um, yeah, yeah. So Chad is super impressed apparently from the sound engineering from the looks of it. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Ryan asks if uh, there will be a chance for this to come out of uh, PlayStation as well. Uh, no PlayStation plans right now. Um, part of the contract with Xbox was exclusivity um, for the time being. And so that's been all that I've been able to manage anyway, so it would have been a, a big question mark no matter what, because it's a lot to do, uh, both releases. <laughs> uh, but right right now, there's no plans, but the, you know, who knows what the future will, will, will show. So our main idea here now is that we are uh, trying to find this Wolfric character. We're looking for... Um, our loved one told us about... Uh, uh, the old runes in the or the runes in the old forest and so we're on our way to the old forest um, looking for those in, in hopes to use that necklace to summon the and speak to the gods and get help mm -hmm. yeah I totally agree on that Ryan impressive work here Joe for one man army yeah. doing this whole Thank thing you. do you think that you will I know expand your your group of uh, workers if uh, Song of Iron gets a lot of success. If it does, if it does super well, I definitely want to, but not by a lot. I think the best case scenario for me would be you know one or two more people on the team helping out. I think the the last thing I want to do is become a boss because I, I want to be the I want to make the game. I want to be a big part of the game making process and so um, I, if I get if it gets too big you become a manager really fast so that's definitely what I want to avoid I there totally you. understand that oh I see there's also different weapons two hand sided axe now is there also yeah. two handers javelins yeah, that there are two hand there's two handers there's a spear um, and the spear goes with the shield, and there's yeah, there's the two-handed axe, and the two-headed axe, which has a little bit more damage. We have this catch. <laughs> I can there do that go. too. Oh, I'm too. Yep. <laughs> nice shot. But I love the, yeah, the you, creativity you here. <laughs> that uh, you can like combine all this attack, yeah. then all of a sudden brought a, the bow or roll behind him and attack him from behind. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely really going after the feeling of like a John Wicky, John Wick style fighting where it just feels really, it's such a brawl and a really tight, quick experience and then it ends and then you recover and then you, you do another one. Exactly, and you use all the assets that you have. 
dear yeah, to exactly. yeah. move forward yeah. and fire do some arrows. Whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> you did hit him. Oh, he's smaller! <laughs> oh, nice one. Yeah, they'll kick too. <laughs> My foot was too short for that. Eat the axe. There you go. Oop, floating axe. <laughs> Every once in a while there's a little thing like that. That's fine. Can't happen. John Wiki yeah. full insurance information. <laughs> John Wiki, yeah. <laughs> that was meant to have a Y, but we'll go for it. That's all good. That's all good. Yeah, but the game, you know, I think it 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 can look a lot like a like a button masher at times, but it's really meant to be sort of a a full experience, sort of more on the side of inside um, or or um, limbo in a lot of ways. It just happens to have uh, some combat in it. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, with the environments and just the the world it is, I just really hope people kind of just can be lost in it for a few hours and you know for a night when they play it, and I just sort of enjoy it and take it for what what it is and stuff. And, uh, I'm definitely it's enjoying definitely, it you know it's not perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. It's not perfect, you know. It, I definitely I've done my best, um, but it's just the beginning of the solo journey, so. Yeah. Can you sneak by? <laughs> yeah, you can. Get, you can make it by. He will turn around, so you'll have to get far enough. But yeah, so there's a little bit of stealth. So we just saw a little bit of that, and then there's this next part coming up is pretty much a bunch of sneaking that you can do. And if you get caught, you know, it's just a it's just a fight, but you can make it through without fighting a bunch of mm. them. Um, Here's an interesting just... question from uh, TJ. Um, do you think on maybe giving this an Versus modes where players of Song of Iron can find this mechanics that you provided against each other and bash their hands a little bit in. Um, yeah, it's something that I. It's a. It's a great question, and I totally understand the appeal. I definitely thought about it a lot. Uh, it's something that I resisted doing because of the complexity of what that what that is. Um, okay. It's so much harder to build a multiplayer <gasps> side of things than it is to just do. Um, single player and being on my own and, and being an artist first, it, it was hard. It's definitely a hard task. I could see potentially doing like a, a local multiplayer type thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there is a great little, this is a great little bit of stealth where you can see a guy in the background uh, and you're using these trees too. Oop, they must have been able to see you a little bit because here they come. Ah! Yeah, I, it would be really cool to do like a local 1v1 or something like that, but honestly, it's a it's a really difficult task and I just want to make sure that I, my first goal right now with launch is to make sure that anybody with bugs um, like gets those fixed so they can play cleanly and all that kind of stuff. And I've had a few reports of some of the languages not being super great, even though I tried to get good translations, it didn't always work out. Uh, so I just want to make sure first before I worry about multiplayer or anything like that that I've cleaned up all the any issues I have got. Totally get it. How many hours yeah. did it? Uh, how many days of and weeks of work did it take you of, to summarize this whole project? Uh, I worked on it for pretty much two years. Um, I started in summer of 2019, and, and yeah, and then here we are at the very end of summer of 2021 so two years is impressive to provide this um dusk will ask how long does it take to beat the game um people are taking about three hours uh, a little bit more sometimes um i've had people that it's taken them five hours to get through and i think there's a playthrough already online of someone doing it like an hour and a half um oh nice very good. Someone just, uh, I mean, someone just blazing through it. Um, so, and that's totally for me too. Um, but I think your first playthrough average run is about about three hours. I I had a day job for, let's see, like 18 months of the two years. And then I left, I left that spot at the end of the year. And, uh, yeah, so maybe 16 months of it. But a little bit now. There we go. 
Listen, ask, what would be your biggest joy and achievement when it comes to this whole game overall? Um, yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, I've, I've just enjoyed the process itself so much. I think um, when I hear from people that have really, really enjoyed it, um, yeah, good. Um, <laughs> When I hear from people that have really, really enjoyed it, it makes me so happy. Um, it's so it's so hard to know, you know, working by myself if I've achieved something of, of any worth. And um, hearing from people really, really, really makes me happy, um, and, and gives me that kind of energy to keep going um, and, and working on it. Uh, but I'm just I'm just happy to have done it. I, I've learned so much from it. I came in knowing so much less than I do now about the entire game development process, you know, I, I've worked in the games for a long time, but it's always been on the animation side. So, um, you know, I've never shipped a game by myself. I've never gone through, I never coded, you know, a game, all that kind of stuff. And so it's been a wonderful educational process for me. And, and I always, I always love that kind of stuff. So happy to have that happen. Do you have your, uh, your answer? Listen, is there any game that you were previously that we might know? Because you said you were yeah, gonna... yeah, probably. I the most recent would be Halo. I was at three four three um, as an animator for Halo Infinite and Halo Five. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was there for six years, and then uh, prior to that, I worked at Cryptic Studios, which did Neverwinter Online, and and then um, Champions Online. I'm, yeah, it was a superhero MMO. Not super oh, yeah, big, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I remember that. Nice. Was... Perfect. There you go. Yeah, I have to great. pause you a second. This feels by. so good. This oh, close awesome. combat brawling and rolling around and they're kicking you <laughs> and then you have to go into panic mode and like, which asset, whatever am I trying here? I shot the first one and all of a sudden I'm, you know, Running, running out of errors, and then I went into this kind of a uh, panic mode, and then the music yeah, amplifies and goes up and be like pushing you even further. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's great to hear. Hmm. I think I remember this part from the demo. There's something back here. I. That's the two-handed. Oh, there we go. There you go. Now, having yeah, so the shield on the back, can can they do they sh hit my shield if I turn uh, it back the back to The arrows still can hit that shield and, and protect you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's one of the things. Like, it's it's actually pretty physics-based the combat, um, and so stuff like that. Well, yeah, will protect you if they hit you from behind. It will still hit you, but arrows can. Stick that shield. That's amazing. Yeah. Ryan asks, you grab do you plan player. any uh, DLC for the future to like build on this uh, little adventure, like a no new um, landscape or something? I think my my hope has always been to go right into the sequel, um, hoping to sort of do the more traditional kind of old school development of you know I. Not restarting and not rebuilding a whole thing, but you know, I'm here. I've got this game half built. If I, yeah, look at you. Good job. <laughs> you know, I've got these assets. But I've got. I just need to build more levels and more stories. So the hope would be that I could release, you know, part two in a reasonable amount of time. Now that so much of the game has already been structured. Um. <laughs> Oh. But they're we're trying to. I mean, it's not out of the question, but that's definitely my my intent. Just to just move on to two. after after supporting and making sure that this, every it works flawlessly for everybody. That's as definitely as, as much as I can manage. <laughs> yeah, I would I would also see rather pour all the work into if it's if it's okay, of course doable and. Uh, Song of Ryan Sissi. Let's talk about Song of Ryan again. Chat, Tabinix, Mishmag, Dev Talk. It will give you a link to Song of Ryan itself. Wishlisted. Especially 
if you want to support our friend here, Joe. Uh, and if you missed it, I was unfortunate enough to be part of this project and uh, voice act something in here. Talking of that really quickly, how did you like the <laughs> Icelandic approach that I came I up know, with? No, that was perfect. That was perfect. It sounded so great. And um, yeah, I mean, I... I, it made me want to be a bigger a bigger role because it was really um, really really awesome um, and you did such a good job with it so it was really great yeah <laughs> I should yeah, have, I should have had my other people do next I, I I do the voice for the the main character here my wife does the female version and then I have a buddy who came in to do um, literally my friend from uh, you know from down the street came over and and recorded uh, enemy Vikings getting hit a bunch and dying and all that, all those fun voices. And yeah, it's uh, grassroots as it comes. That's definitely, definitely, definitely a cool approach. I can see it feels super good on uh, mouse and keyboard. I even have to say it's like it a little bit more than on the controller when we tried the demo. Yeah, cool. Wait, can I? Take that arrow in me? Oh, yes. Yes. So, Chad, any last questions here to Joe before we dive into approaching and trying to do the full playthrough? I'm not sure we're going to beat it today, but we're definitely going to beat it on the birthday stream. Also, if you enjoy what you see here, definitely make sure that you type the word axe in chat, and that will give you a chance to win a copy of uh, Song of Our Own Sneak Attack. There was one question about... Uh replayability and I, I can say that there is um i think at least a good reason to play a second time if you if you resume the game after you beat it it will be a, basically a new game plus you'll be able to play again with all of your armor and stuff and so you can kind of do a fast run through like super overpowered run through um, <laughs> and you, you you build up some stats along the way too so you'll be stronger more health more stamina more mana when you get to the point where you have mana um and uh with the way it ends, you'll there's a good reason to go back and see what what you can see along the way. Um, so I think there's there's a you know with the with the playtime second playthrough, I think I think it's definitely worth a second a second run through, especially if you liked it. And, yeah. right. Are you ready for this? I don't know. But <laughs> that over there looks like there might be something hidden. No. No. Now, if I since I accidentally found that sword, now you're checking everywhere. <laughs> I want to see all those secrets. Ooh. This doesn't look stable. Okay. Nice. Well done. <laughs> and there we go. What are you from your experience right now? That's a good question that you have uh, allocated with uh, Song of Ryan One. What do you plan or want to improve if there will be a sequel? Or Yeah, I, that's a good question. I think in in some ways I want to just I want to elevate everything that the game has. You know, I so much of the process of building it was learning and so I I know so much better how to do something, so I definitely want to spend some time kind of rebuilding some of it the right way, the cleaner way. Um I think there's some systems that could use work, but other than sort of fixing what's already there, I definitely want to add more to the combat in, in terms of... Yeah, here comes the big the big troll. Just keep going, <laughs> right I'm just shocked here. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I want to add, you know, a little bit of like grabs and throws and um, just to add more to the dynamic and fluidness of the fight, building on top of what I've already done, because I really like the... I like how it's working. I just, I, I, I think I could definitely see more layers to it, and so I definitely want to go there. And um, it's just a lot of cleaning up the process, I think, and, and using what I've learned to make make it just that much more polished and higher quality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's a tough cookie. Yeah, he's uh, he's relentless. Slides are definitely a good one. You can roll past them too. Yeah, there you go. That'll help. Get him a little bit of a spin loop. Oof. It's 
It's getting close. Running out of it. Oh, right into the heart. <laughs> Take an arrow well to the heart. <laughs> and with a super cheesy reference here, I have to say the game shot myself also into the heart. And uh, <laughs> Joe, I thank you kindly for your time here. Chad, I'll give you like five seconds if you have any more questions that we can ask here. Oh, dear friend Joe, about the Song of Iron. Other than that, I would say we see our appreciation and hop right into the full playthrough of this game and see where the journey brings us and kick ass and uh, see what's going on. The current build seems very forgiving in terms of the amount of the hits on the main character can take. Is there, like, difficulty spiking or something? Um, yes, I mean, like... You did a pretty good job with the troll. A lot of people have trouble with him the first time they play. I think it's not meant to be a uh, Souls-like or anything like that. So I kind of wanted you to just be a super strong, you know, Viking and, and feel really powerful and stuff. Um, it could maybe be tuned up for sure, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, it's forgiving. I de definitely don't want people to suffer from endless death in combat and stuff. Um, I, I had considered difficulties it's not something that's in the game right now my first thing would be to make a super easy mode because some people do have trouble with it um mm -hmm. some like stuff like the like the troll can be really tough but i could see it definitely implementing uh, difficulty settings eventually you here and um four said it would be a cool mechanic if you like take a pause when after you find an, an, a drink of your meat horn or something to <laughs> yeah, <heal> yourself. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, what comes up in here, since we're talking about difficulties, to my mind, would be uh, an amazing one that we call it, <laughs> call it Thor mode. <laughs> yeah, right. The easy, yeah, run. The easy mode, Thor mode. <laughs> and then call it the Odin mode for a no hit run where you just instantly die if you get hit once. Oh yeah, that'd be that would be pretty wild. There is a um, yeah, <laughs> that would be pretty wild. I'd be impressed if anybody would be able to get through that. So, do you do you plan on, on adding some assets for future updates of Song of Iron, or do you see it as a complete and maybe do some bug fixing, tweaking here and there? I see it as complete, but I definitely want to do bug fixing and make sure that everything's running smoothly. And I think, you know, the perfect world would be I'll use Song of Iron 1 to make sure the new climbing system works really well, like for part two. I'll be working on it as in part one so eventually say climbing will just be way way better way cleaner whatever mm -hmm. um I'll, I'll i want to do it in one first so that when i move over to two it's already nice and clean and all that kind of stuff so that sort of stuff is what we'll see change potentially but nothing new the, for the most part it's complete minus whatever little stuff maybe comes along the way but very good as an idea for an easter egg maybe climbing up a building and jumping into a hate ball <laughs> <laughs> yeah right just yeah, that, that would actually be pretty good i should do that yeah there's there's a couple easter eggs in here um that hopefully you'll see and enjoy uh, one in particular i think everybody will really like <laughs> i will definitely try to, to find it I won't to, tell you. to keep an eye out for them and um yeah i would say if you have the time afterwards when we when we wrapped it up i dropped it, the link definitely to the discord i will also put the link into the uh, vod later on that we'll take and make of this for the song of iron discord if you have ideas suggestions like the drinking horn uh, meat thing or uh some other ideas that we could implement into song of Ryan 2 or um i mean now we're talking if it will gonna happen but definitely bring in your ideas bring in your passion about it you're hype about it and again thank you kindly joe for joining us on this amazing journey i'm excited yeah, to see what's gonna you. happen after oh man uh, yeah i'll i'll probably be lurking and watching you play for sure uh thank you so much for i mean you've been such a great support this whole time uh it means the world to me and hopefully you enjoy the game and uh enjoy your your little cameo in it and uh, <laughs> And, um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks a lot, Joel. Have a wonderful, wonderful start into your day. Sorry for dragging you out of the bed so early for this death nah, talk. Oh, good. And uh, <laughs> it was a pleasure. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.